Ever signed up for a memory course or read a memory improvement book and thrown your hands up in the air? If so, that frustration ends today. You're about to learn the rules for completing and benefiting from any memory training course you take. And I'll show you how to cross any barriers or obstacles you encounter along the way too, including how to never lose your precious notes from the courses you take again. A hard learned lesson I hope no one ever has to suffer. Hi there, this is Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com where I help mature learners of every age take mental adventures using memory techniques. Our community helps you make learning easy, effective, elegant, and fun. So hit that subscribe button now and enable notifications by clicking the bell icon. That way you won't miss a thing, especially our live streams where you can meet the valuable members of the Magnetic Memory Method community, get inspiration, and ask questions. Now first off, let me pay you a compliment and congratulate you for your interest in completing a memory improvement course. Not everyone is so considerate to the long-term health of their brain, nor the benefits that come from learning how to train your memory. These benefits include more than just remembering information and having more memory power. After all, you'll also experience enhanced focus and concentration, mental clarity, improved confidence, boosts in your professional competence, improved emotional control, increased critical thinking skills, and that's just for starters. The question is, how are you going to get yourself to complete the course from beginning to end, and why do you need to complete complete the course in such detail? These are important questions and luckily there are answers. But first, let's understand the key reasons people do not complete courses. It's rarely a lack of discipline or a problem with the courses. In fact, the first problem usually comes from the fact that people want to instantly have the skills they hope to acquire. And when they see that there's some distance still to go between wanting the memory skills and having them, the brain can feel overwhelmed. Now, according to learning and memory expert Barbara Oakley in MindShift, the insular cortex of the brain fires off a pain signal. It's possible the brain creates a pain response to the sight of anything that requires effort to cause you to preserve energy. Now, we don't know exactly why our brains do this, but the Savannah hypothesis would suggest that we are evolutionarily designed to preserve energy for when we need to quickly move for survival. This would explain why pain is usually only a motivator when we're suffering so much we have no choice but to take action. But when the pain subsides by doing nothing, we're instantly satisfied with the return to a state of no pain. Now, it might be hard to understand why that what I've just said can help you complete a memory training course, but knowledge is power. And the reason I include relaxation training in all of my courses is because I once felt that pain too. Fortunately, I knew about the body's propensity to create pain and the Savannah hypothesis. And this insight into why the brain makes things that should be so simple seem so difficult has helped me immensely in many areas of life. And when you understand the source of your irrational behavior, it's easier to change it. So the first thing you should do is learn to recognize when a learning task has triggered overwhelm and pain, and then learn to associate that overwhelm with relaxation. Take action only when relaxed, and you'll soon understand in your own experience just how fun learning can be. Second, it's important to understand that the internet has changed how we look at information. Whereas we once appreciated the structure of books that a variety of thinkers innovated over hundreds of years, now we scroll and swipe through content. These behaviors have changed how we perceive content and created something called dual path readership. Now this term means that we're often grazing through content and the internet has created many genius innovations that help us quickly perceive what an article is about, but at the cost of making it difficult for our eyes to focus on what used to be normal paragraphs. Now we call them walls of text. Likewise with videos, anything over 10 minutes seems like an eternity. Worse, we've often trained ourselves to watch videos at two times speed while we have 32 other tabs open and are engaged in other activities, often on other devices. It's not uncommon for people to also have a smartphone or tablet beside their laptop while both of them chime and draw our attention away from the training that will help us the most if we would only just focus on it. Well, finally, it's important to realize that the internet has switched on the gatherer part of our hunter-gatherer nature. We scour the net and bookmark information or download PDFs we'll read later. All too often, later never comes because we're already off gathering a bunch of resources for the next subject we want to learn about. The promises of hypertext that are still truly rewarding and powerful have also become the enemy. So given this new normal, what do we do as learners of memory courses? Well, we're gonna protect our schedule, shield ourselves from interruptions of all kinds, and use a bit of ancient technology to help guide our path. 
Let's talk about protecting your schedule first. This practice is quite easy. If you enter a video course, first count all the videos. You can either estimate or count the minutes required for all the videos and then add them up. And you now have a picture of how much time you need to go through the content. Next, design a plan of attack. For example, if the video course amounts to an hour, get out your calendar and plan out four 15 minute viewing sessions. If it's six hours, figure out how you can get through the content over a week in short blasts of time that are right for you. As a pro tip, whatever you think you can handle, scale back by five minutes or so. If you think you can sit and watch a video without interruption for 20 minutes, scale back to 15 minutes. This scale back technique is something I learned from accelerated learning expert Tim Ferriss in the context of meditation, but it works well in the context of completing courses too. And I make this suggestion because many people overestimate their discipline. They often underestimate it too, and I personally find that this technique makes sure I'm more or less in the middle of what is the true amount of time I can sit through a video course. Being realistic is one of your best weapons when it comes to organizing your time. After that, it only makes sense to go through a course from beginning to end without skipping around. We'll talk more about how to do that in just a bit. Next, you've got to shield yourself from distractions. First, you have the environmental distractions of where you want to watch your memory training courses. And if there are people moving around and making noise, you won't be able to concentrate. Perhaps you can get away with watching video courses in a cafe, but I've always preferred a quiet corner of a library. The human traffic is minimal and makes it easy to take quick breaks by looking at interesting books or just gazing out the window for a while. Second, you have the distractions of your devices. Personally, I like to leave my smartphone at home. I can't always do it, depending on how I might need to connect with my wife, but she'll you know, usually know where to find me. And those sessions without that phone are pure bliss. Not only will no one be able to interrupt me via the phone, I won't be able to interrupt myself because there's no device to look at. Now, browser tabs are a bit trickier when watching an online memory course, but you can still close all of your tabs and have just the one needed for your course open. I love a Chrome extension called One Tab for rapidly funneling all of my tabs into a single tab for opening later when a project requires me to have a bunch of them open, and a lot of my projects do. Third, you need to guide your path through the course. I use an ancient device called a notebook for note taking, and it's very simple to open up to a fresh page and write down the words video one. Underneath that heading, I jot down the notes pertaining to that video before moving on to video two. I know this is painfully obvious and complete common sense, but I'm making the suggestion precisely because common sense just isn't that common. The great thing about this note taking strategy is that it helps you keep track of where you are in the course in a linear format and look back through your notes in the order of the videos you watched. Now, I don't always use this technique, however. Sometimes I will use index cards. For the notes pertaining to video one, I will place V1 in the bottom right corner. Then for all the cards pertaining to video two, I'll put V2 and so on. This technique is useful for two purposes. First, if I want to memorize anything from the course, it's easy to flip quickly through the cards and pull out just the ones with the information I want to memorize. They can then be placed in a logical order or order of preference for any number of reasons and corresponded with magnetic stations in a memory palace. Second, if I later want to write an article, I can likewise pull out whichever card cards I might like to refer to in the article. In both cases, it's an easy matter to reassemble the cards according to the video they belong to because they've all been marked. And if you're worried that you've lost the exact order in which you took the notes, you can always add another digit, such as V1.1, to indicate that a card belongs to video one and is the first note you took from that video. V2.7 would indicate the seventh note you took from the second video. And in this way, you'll easily be able to reassemble your notes. And in case you're wondering, yes, I do this, and it is in fact exactly how I researched my dissertation, multiple scholarly articles, and many of my books. And to keep the individual books and video courses I took notes on cards together, I stored them in individual Ziploc baggies and then arranged these inside of shoe boxes. Super low tech and kind of nerdy, I know. But back when I wrote my dissertation, backing up your computer wasn't so easy. And there was no such thing as cloud computing, at least not to my knowledge. I had a Nokia cell phone at the time, if that's any indication. Now more than once, I saw my fellow graduate students lose hundreds of hours of work because they had pumped their notes into computers. They didn't back up on floppy disks or otherwise, and they had to start a game. One person I recall even dropped out of the doctoral program altogether because the devastation of starting over again was just too much to handle. Well, that tragic story aside, the point here is to give your mind something to do 
while focusing on the memory course and have a powerful means of revisiting your notes. Plus, by handwriting your notes, you'll get several additional learning benefits. As Gary Dean Underwood, one of our cherished Magnetic Memory Method Mastermind members recently noted, I love software and love finding methods to be more efficient and time-saving, avoiding replication and duplicity in many areas of life. I have found a couple exceptions to this approach to many tasks, however, and one is memory training. I discovered there is some unique, almost magical benefit in hand drawing my Magnetic Memory Method memory palaces, including handwriting my mnemonic devices, vocabularies, et al. There seems to be some neurological or neuro-linguistic benefit in connecting hand-eye brain efforts to maximize retention and application to numerous memory projects, language learning, study, research, test taking, etc. Welcome to the elite world of Anthony's Magnetic Memory Method learners. Well, thanks for that, Gary. And the same principle applies to any memory course you take, and indeed, any training you might invest time, money, and energy into completing. So what do you say? Do you think these simple recommendations might help you dive into a course and complete it over a few days or less? Myself, I had to learn these tactics and strategies through a ton of trial and error. Like everyone else, I love shortcuts and anything that lets me skip to the head of the line. But the problem is, is sometimes skipping to the head of the line cuts your head off. And I learned a long time ago when watching how my fellow university students struggled with their books that the shortcut is often just buckling down and getting the reading done. It never takes nearly as long as one thinks, and it's really the bouncing around from one thing to the next that takes up most of the time. Focus, my friends, and understand how and why focus falls apart. Knowledge truly is power, but only when it's applied. You really cannot afford to not finish the courses you start. So let me know if this helped you and keep the conversation going below. And if you're watching this and you want my free memory improvement training course, you know exactly how to complete it. And the same principles apply to the exercises too. Get it now at magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash YT. The link is in the description below and you'll be able to quickly complete four videos and go through three compact eBooks with examples, exercises, and a summary of the videos. If you haven't done it yet, hit that thumbs up, get subscribed, and leave me a comment. Every short sentence and interaction helps me continue helping you because it lets the robots know that humans care about the great memory tradition we all need to defend. Thanks as ever for the view. Hope to hear from you soon. And until we get to speak again, keep yourself magnetic.